depth of the sea And everything you put in between Day and night, the moon and the sun All I see is perfect work Created me and other human beings Different species of living things Many more were known to us All I see is perfect joy Beautiful. I think the first lesson that you should learn is that if your teachers go and listen to Sham Sheikh, then you have to pay the price because then they make you listen to the same Sheikh. So next time your teachers say that they want to go listen to some sheikh, you tell the teachers, no, no need, you, you stay here. No, no need, don't go and listen to the sheikh. Because then we have to come and listen to the sheikh. Right? I'm very happy to be here and I'm very happy to speak to you. And at the end of my lecture, I hope you will also be happy that I came here and that I spoke to you. Inshallah. I want to give you a gift. And my gift is called the power of one. And what is that one? It's one degree more. One degree more. Not a great, mo great deal more, just one degree more. At 99 degrees, water is hot. At 100 degrees, water boils. Boiling water produces steam. And steam can power an engine. What does that mean? It means that at 99 degrees, nothing will happen. You just have hot water. But at 100 degrees, a train moves. And that's a matter of how much? Just one degree more. That's it. Just one degree more. In the 2012 men's 100 meter race, the difference between the Olympic gold medal and no medal was a quarter of a second, 0.25 seconds. In the Indy 500 car race of 2015, the difference between the first prize and the second prize was 0.1 second. The difference in, the, in prize money was $1,656,000. And that's why I say to you that only one degree separates the good from the great. Between growing up and growing old, there is a short window during which we have the opportunity to make a difference. When that window closes, our life is over even if we remain alive. Because to live does not mean only to breathe. Let me ask you a question. What differentiates the lion from the antelope? It's the same thing that differentiates ordinary light from laser. And it's the same thing that differentiates the leaders from the rest. And that is focus. Focus. Ordinary light at best illuminates. Laser cuts through steel. What is focus? Focus is the art of ignoring fluff. It is the ability to choose what you will look at, what you will listen to, what you will do. That is focus. Today we live in a world where we have an overdose of information. We have so-called news coming to us from everywhere. We have our gadgets which are geared to give us information from everywhere. The successful person is the one who picks and choose what he or she will, will see and what he or she will act on. That is the meaning of focus. And that's why I say to you that if you want to get what you never had, you must do what you never did. 
if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. Results come from actions and actions define you. Actions define us. What we have, our knowledge does not define us. Our shape doesn't define us. Our color doesn't define us. Our religion does not define us. Our race does not define us. There is only one thing which defines us and that is our actions. You can have all the knowledge in the world. If you don't act on the knowledge, there is no result. And that's why I say to you, it's your life and you are responsible for the results. So now you are aware and you have a target. And what is the target? One degree more. That's it. I'm giving you a very small thing, just one degree more. But that one degree is the difference between success and failure. So let me give you seven things on the path of success, the seven realities that we must face. The first one, we become what we think. We become what we think. Your mind is like a fertile field. It doesn't care what you plant in it, but it will only return to you what you put in it. You plant rice, you get rice. You plant wheat, you get wheat. You plant rice, you want wheat, you no get. So be very careful what you listen to. Be very careful what you look at. Be very careful what you, le what you read. Be very careful who your friends are. Because all of these are inputs into our mind. And those inputs are seeds. And those seeds will germinate. And then you will get a crop. And at that time you suddenly discover that this is not the crop I wanted. Well, there's nothing you can do because the seeds are the seeds you planted. So be very careful what seeds you plant in your mind. Because the mind doesn't care what you put in it. The mind will only give you what you put in it. The second thing is, is attitude. And what is the meaning of attitude? It means to understand that present circumstances do not decide if you will succeed or fail. They only decide where you need to start. We do not control circumstances. We do not control what the world gives us. But we control how we wish to face it. We control how we wish to view what the world gives us. If you take the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and if you see the circumstances that he was given, you will find that he was not given wealth. He was not given political power. He was not given supporters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually took away whatever he had. Allah took away his parents. His father died before he was born. His mother died soon after. His grandfather died soon after. His uncle died after, the, after some time, after some years. His wife died 25 years after they had been married. So all the supporters were cut off. Yet you know and I know what he achieved. And that's because of attitude. Because he never said give up. He continued to work to please his Rabb Jalla Jalalu. The third gift to you is faith. What is faith? Faith is what Ibrahim alayhi salam had when he was sitting in the cup of the trebuchet before he was to be fired into the great conflagration that they had lit for him. A huge fire which was so big and so hot that they couldn't even get close to it to throw Ibrahim alayhi salam into it. So they had to use a trebuchet, they had to use a siege engine to throw him from a distance. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is sitting in this cup, tied up. He cannot move. And he's about to be fired into the fire. And Jibreel alayhi salam comes to him. And Jibreel alayhi salam says, Ya Khalilullah, Tell me, how can I help you? Tell me what you need from me. And Ibrahim says, I don't need anything from you. 
I do not need anything from you. Jibreel goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalalahu and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows Allah is not dependent on Jibreel or anyone to tell him what is happening. But Jibreel goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Ya Zal Jalali wal Ikram, Ya Rahman Rahimin, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Your Khalil is about to be burnt. I went to him and I asked him, what can I do for you? He says, you cannot do anything. I will not tell you. He says, can I help you? He says, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go back to him. Tell him I sent you. And tell him I want to know. Tell him your Rabb is asking. What does he want from his Rabb? Jibril Islam comes back. All of this takes time to tell, but you know, these are things which happen in instances. Jibril Islam comes back and says, Ya Khalilullah, I have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalalu. And your Rabb is asking, what do you want from him? Ibrahim alayhi salam says, my Rabb does not need to ask. This is the meaning of faith. His Rabb says, what do you want? Ibrahim alayhi salam says, I want whatever you want. I want whatever you want. Rida bil khada is faith. Not just to accept what Allah writes for us, but to be pleased with it, to be happy about it. This is the meaning of faith. In the words of one of my favorite writers, Barbara Winters, she said, faith, she defined faith. And she said, when you come to the end of the light of all that you know, and are about to step off into the darkness of the unknown, faith is to know that one of two things will happen. There will be something firm to stand on, or you will be taught how to fly. That is the meaning of faith. The fourth one is perspective. What is perspective? Perspective is the ability to hold two pictures in your mind simultaneously. Where I am now and where I want to be. Perspective is a function of distance. Is to be able to stand back in your life and look at yourself and say, where am I now and where do I want to be? It's only when we hold these two pictures simultaneously in our minds that we are then able to chart a pathway to our destination. Think about this. In the Dubai Motor Show of 2011, they showcased Volkswagen Tuareg with gold-plated mag wheels. And they did that to honor the rally driver Nasser al who won the Dakar rally in a Volkswagen Tuareg. In the same year, in the Geneva Motor Show, the highlight was the latest engineering innovation, a new gearbox using titanium molding, which produced greater torque and greater speed. A young man or a young woman goes to the Dubai Motor Show. What are they thinking? They are thinking bling. They are thinking show off. Gold plated mag wheels. The only thing that gold plated mag wheels will do is to give you nightmares in parking. But the same person who goes to the Geneva Motor Show, what is he thinking? He is thinking engineering, he is thinking science, he is thinking technology, he is thinking pushing back the boundaries of knowledge, he is thinking invention. And that is what the difference in perspective means. Fifth one is goal. What kind of goal? An extraordinary goal. Why an extraordinary goal? Because it is the nature of the extraordinary goal 
to inspire extraordinary effort. A mountaineer who is standing at the base camp of Mount Everest does not need a motivation lecture. The mountain inspires him. The mountain inspires him to make the effort to get to the top. So anytime you are feeling low in your life, anytime you are feeling you have reached some plateau, anytime, anytime you are feeling stressed, you know what you must do? Not go and relax on some beach, no. What you need to do is to up the game, is to raise your goal. You're feeling on a, as if you are on a plateau because your goal is not big enough. Raise your goal to the point which scares the daylights out of you and then go and reach that goal, work to reach that goal. Any goal that does not scare the daylights out of you is not a worthy goal. A goal is not something that you see in your dream. A goal is something that doesn't let you sleep. It scares you to death. And that's what gives you the inspiration to actually go and achieve, the, achieve that goal. <laughs> Think of what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was thinking when he stood on Safa and he called out, Wa Subaha. And he called the people and said, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. What was he thinking? One single man in one village in the middle of the boondocks. Nobody knows where Makkah is in some desert in Arabia. And he has a message which he wants to take to every living being on the face of the planet until the day of judgment. What kind of goal is that? What kind of goal is that? That is the kind of goal which creates the results that today you and I are seeing. And how do you get this? You get this by doing three things. One is reflection. At the end of each day, sit down and reflect in your life. Start a new book. Get a notebook, a fresh notebook and start it from today. And every night sit down and reflect and say, how did my, go go my day go today? What did I do today? that I didn't do yesterday. How was my day today better than yesterday or was it better, was it not better? Reflect on that day and how will you answer this question, how was my day, was it good, was it bad? You will answer it and you can answer it only if you are working to a goal. Otherwise there is no way. If I tell you how far, how, how much distance have I traveled today, if, you, if I ask you this question, how much distance did I travel today? Can you answer this question? No. If to answer the question, what must I first tell you? From where did I start? No. If I don't tell you from where I started, I said, how much distance did I travel today? Tell me. What will you tell me? You will tell me first, tell us, where did you start from? Because then from that point to this place, I can tell you the distance. But if I don't know where I started from, then you have no clue. So similarly, if you say, how did my day go today? The answer depends on what were you trying to achieve today? What was your goal today? And therefore, every day, reflect, write down your goal, introspect, think about that. What did I do today to help me achieve this goal? Or what did I do today which hindered me from achieving the goal? What tomorrow should I do differently? And then conceptualize those learnings and say from tomorrow, I am going to behave differently from today. We began this lecture from where? To say that only action results. Only action has results. And therefore everything must be boiled down to finally to say, what must I do? And then we come to the last of it, which is perseverance. <laughs> and what's perseverance? Perseverance is to get up to rise every time you fall. By all means, change the method. If you're working towards a goal, you've been working in a particular way, you find that way doesn't, have, doesn't give you the results, change the method. Change the path. Change the people. But never change the goal. Never lower the bar. Never lower the standard. Never lower the goal, never change the metric of measurement. That must be constant. 
how we get there can change the method itself must never change and that's why i say to you many people are focused on role models we must, we must have good role models and i say to you it doesn't matter what role model you have because it's not important who you want to be what's important is who wants to be you so instead of chasing a role model ask yourself i want to be a role model and if i want to be a role model what must i do and what must i stop doing and if you are on that track believe me you don't need role models people will look up to you as a role model i want to end finally with sharing with you my own motto in life and that is i will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control I'm going to repeat that I will not allow what is not in my control to prevent me from doing what is in my control. I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you. I hope this is useful. Uh, those are my links there. Most welcome to email. And uh, the other last two links are the links to um, uh, the my lectures videos on YouTube. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. مالك الملك يا العزيز السميع البصير الحليم الليل والجبار ذو الجلال والإكرام Oh,